Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today I'm gonna to be giving you all the tips on how to make a soft gradient sunset sky. So let's jump right in and start. Okay friends, today I am going to be giving you tips on how to create a soft gradient for backgrounds and skies in your watercolor landscape pieces. Okay, so it can be a little bit tricky as a beginner, so today I'm giving you tips. And my first tip is to start with decent paper. You're not gonna be as successful with a cellulose paper or a lower grade paper. It just doesn't retain the water as well and it dries at different rates which is going to give you kind of funky marks if you want like a really cool sky with you know unevenness in the water it, it would work wonderful but if you're trying to get a nice soft background it's best to use 100 percent cotton paper today i'm actually using 50 percent cotton paul rubens watercolor paper so this isn't even the best paper to use but i'm going to try and make it work on this so that is my tip about paper also Picking an appropriate size. So like I said, this is Paul Rubens. This is a block um, and it is 7.6 inches by 10 inches. And I've cut it, cut it, taped it into two sections to work on two smaller sections. I find working as a beginner, it's easier to work on smaller pieces of paper. It can get really tricky, especially if you're doing a really big wash on a big piece of paper you're bound to have areas dry at different rates and then you're not gonna have that soft gradient look. So when you're practicing this, try and start with a smaller surface area. So that's why I put it into two. We could do it on one, but I wanted to also give you two different skies to kind of practice. Um, so that's what we're doing with the paper. I have my Windsor Newton Professional watercolors in my palette and then brushes. Okay, so when you're doing a sky, you want to wet up the whole background so you get these really nice soft bleeds and gradients um, so you can blend them really well. So it's good to have a larger wash brush. I just got these two, but I have been using this Princeton Select mop brush, oval mop brush for like ever. Um, and it's really good for laying down that water. It holds a lot of water so you can have the background really nice and wet and it will stay wet for a longer period of time granted if you have good paper but I find this one's really good and then I have these two flat wash brushes um, this is a Princeton Velvet Touch and this is a Neptune I think the Neptune is a bit softer this one's a bit stiffer but both work well either way a wash brush is great or mop brush then you're going to want a pointed round brush so I have my Princeton Snap I, I have so many but I'm just going with a couple of these today my Princeton Snap is very affordable um, and works well. It's on the stiffer side. It doesn't hold as much water as the Princeton Neptune, but both will work. This one is a lot softer, holds more water. And in my opinion, for beginners, I find working with a stiffer brush is a bit easier for water control reasons because a brush like this, Princeton Neptune, does hold a lot of water. You may end up putting more water than you mean to on your paper, but totally whatever feels right to you, do it. Honestly, it's a personal preference, but these are what I have today. So for today's demonstration, I'm gonna go with my mop brush and my Princeton Snap brush, and we're gonna start. So we are gonna be doing a wet on wet background like I've talked about, and I've done this many times, but I'm gonna kinda of talk it a, about it a bit more, especially when it comes to doing backgrounds. Okay, so what you are looking for when you are doing wet on wet, filling up a whole kind of sheet of water, you, the look you want to go for is wet enough that if you were to tilt it towards the sun or a light source, you'd see a nice light shine over the whole paper. But what you don't want is it to be pooling all to one side. So if you were to tilt it and you see like drips and pools at the bottom, that's not what you're looking for. If that's the case, you can always just mop it up with your paper towel. Um, but I'm going to show you. So I'm going to wet up my mop brush and we're going to start over here. Okay, we want it nice and wet. The mop brush definitely carries a lot of water. I'm gonna put too much water to show you what I mean with the pooling. Okay. Okay, let's see. It's actually not really pooling. 
it's really hard to see in this light on my camera but if you're getting like drips all to one side I don't know if you guys can see that but what you do want yeah there's a little bit of a pool at the edge here and you, you don't want that because when water no sorry when paint gets into that pool the paint will just sit in the pool of water you want the paint to kind of explode across the page you don't want it to sit in the pool so if that happens just take your paper towel <laughs> i can't speak today and just mop it up just a little bit okay and then i'm just going to dry off my brush a bit and just move it all around okay and what you are looking for is this nice nice sheen i don't know if you can tell on camera Okay, you see that kind of light bouncing off of it? That's what you want. It also shows you if there's any parts that have dried already. So you're not gonna see that shine. So over here, it's a little bit more dry. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water. Okay, and I'm using a watercolor block. You don't have to do that. You could always just tape down your papers, which you're gonna wanna do if you are working on a single piece of paper. Just to keep it from warping, a watercolor block is actually perfect for this, but I know they can get kind of expensive, so work with what you have, but either way, tape it down or watercolor block. Okay, now let's do our sky. So what you don't wanna do is have your brush dripping wet, because if it's already wet and you're adding a ton more water, you're gonna create a pool. So I have my wet brush. I'm gonna activate my, my paint with my wet brush, but I don't want it dripping off my brush at all okay if it's like too wet and it's dripping it's not going to blend as well so move it around a bit if you need to just tap it gently on your paper towel and you're just going to start moving it in one direction don't go up and down side to side kind of go with the gradient of the sky i'm doing kind of like a, a slight curve okay let's do we're going to do like a yellow and pink sky to start so I'm starting with pink at the top. Okay, moving it around a bit more. My brush feels a little bit drier, so that's why I added a bit more water. I'm gonna keep going. Okay, and I'm just really blending it in there. Now you gotta be careful because this can start to dry if you didn't put enough water. So just kind of keep tabs of how much water. I just put it on my paper towel just to make sure I don't have too, too much and move it around, blend it out. If you feel like your paper's getting a little dry, like I feel like it's a little bit drier here, you can add a little bit more water, a bit more color, like that. You can add a little bit more water down here, because I know my paper is not sopping wet, I don't see any pools. If you see any pools, just mop it up with your paper towel, and you should be good. Okay, and I'm just blending it out, going one way, and then I'm gonna show you how to do some kind of like cloudy streaks in the sky without it looking streaky. Okay, so I'm blending it together. I did pink halfway down, yellow halfway up. I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter. Actually, I want a bit more of a lighter yellow. I'm gonna grab my lemon yellow here. Okay. Bring it down. Take your time because the more paint and water you're adding on it, it's gonna stay wet so you're not too worried about it drying. Wash off my brush. Let's grab a bit more pink. I'm gonna make it a bit darker at the top. Sorry if you can hear my son. <laughs> He's probably battling with my husband downstairs because that's what he does. He battles. Everything is, let's battle! Because he's a boy and he's really into that. So I'm dragging it down here and they're meeting in the middle. Pink and yellow mixed together make orange and I want that in my sky so I can definitely overlap them and turn this middle part into a nice orange kind of sky gradient thing, okay? You're going yellow to orange to pink, okay? You could add yellow right on top, make it a bit more orangey, slowly dragging it down. And as you drag it down, it starts to lose a bit of its orangey pigment, so you're back into the yellow. That's how you get those soft gradients. Okay, now I'm gonna start from the orange, and slowly go up, going back and forth, Okay, make sure you don't have any pools on your paper. Okay, and then pink, like so. Okay, and there is your gradient. It actually looks better in person than it does on camera because <laughs> I'm looking at it both ways. 
okay? So it's a nice soft gradient. If you wanna bring up that orange a bit more, you definitely can. Same motion going back and forth. Okay, now what if we wanted to add a bit of purple into the sky or a darker blue? Now, the thing you have to think about with colors, purple and yellow are contrasting colors. If you mix two contrasting colors together, it will turn brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the purple up here with pink, because purple and pink together just make more of a purpley pink. And I'm gonna try not to really get into the orange or the yellow because I don't want it to turn brown, but if I want to bring it down a little bit, I'm gonna tap it and I'm gonna show you how. So I'm gonna grab some of this mauve color because it's already kind of like a purpley, purpley color. And I'm just gonna bring it, maybe this is like the clouds, okay? And again, same kind of motion, okay? You're going back and forth, maybe a slight curve. You can go down in one motion, but I'm gonna show you how to blend it because you don't want this like streak of color. Okay, I'm just gonna bring it down. Okay, I'm going a little bit into the orange and it changed the color a bit, but it's still kind of on the pinky side. Okay, I'm gonna have more saturated paint. You want the, you want the more saturated paint up at the top, mixing with the color that it mixes well with. I don't wanna put a big thing of dark purple right on the yellow and blend and blend and blend. Then it's gonna turn brown. When we get down here, you're gonna see I'm gonna tap. So I know I can blend it up there because it blends well with pink. Okay. So it's not streaky. Just moving it around like so. Okay. Now, once you get to the color that's a bit more, like if you mix them, it's gonna turn brown. You're gonna do more of a tapping motion or you're gonna do a, a single swipe. You're not gonna go back and forth, back and forth and blend it together because that's when you get your funny colors. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm gonna make it darker and bigger up here. And then as it gets closer to like the horizon line, I'm just gonna really gently single swipe and make it thinner, smaller, okay? Then I can take some of that pigment off my brush on my paper towel, move it around if I have to, if it like kind of bled all weird, blend it a bit, because you're not adding any more pigment, you're just kind of mixing around the color that you do already have. Okay, just slightly, and then it will, because it's wet, it's gonna kind of expand out. If you wanna add a little bit more, you can tap like this. So you see how you see that purple without it mixing? You're just doing a tapping motion. Okay, but you don't wanna spend time going back and forth like you did up here. Why is it not taking color there? That's funny. Okay, tap, tap, tap. Use the side of your brush you want to. Okay. Usually the clouds up towards the top are bigger. And the further away they are, they're smaller and thinner. Take note that while I'm adding these purple clouds, I'm not really dipping my paintbrush in the water, so I'm not adding extra water, just a little bit of pigment. I might even grab some dioxazine purple and make them darker clouds at the top. Okay, so the thing that's really gonna help with these paintings and making these nice soft gradients is your paper um, and just the wetness of your paper and the ability to blend. This is something definitely to be practiced. It doesn't just like come right away with everyone, it did not with me at the beginning either. It's something I've been trying to practice. I found skies and like clouds have always been really difficult, but you make it work, okay? Now, I don't know if you can see here where I'm getting kind of like this like spider vein, -y, like, which I usually like, but I want it a bit softer there. So I'm gonna wash and dry off my brush and I'm just gonna kind of shape this cloud a bit more. Just gonna clean it up a bit. 
Okay, I'm not using a lot of pressure. I'm just kind of cleaning up underneath very, very gently. Okay, and there we go. So there is like a really soft pink and blue and not blue, pink and then orange and yellow sky with some purple clouds. Um, let's try another one. Let's try like a yellow into blue. And that can be a bit tricky because we went yellow into pink and then it met in the middle and created an orange. And we like that for skies. But if we're doing a yellow and a blue, we meet in the middle, it's gonna be green. And you don't really see green skies too much and that might not be desirable. So I'm gonna show you how to do two colors, a gradient of two colors meeting in the middle without turning it green, okay? So again, we are wetting up our whole paper. It's just easier for our colors to blend. And keep in mind, this is not the most ideal paper for this. This is 50% cotton. It would be a lot easier on 100% cotton. Okay, just drying some of that off. I'm gonna tilt, make sure it's all wet but not pooling. Okay, now I'm going to take my blue and I think I'm gonna go with some, I'm gonna mix a bit of ultramarine and turquoise. Okay, and I'm gonna start from the top. It's always darker at the top. And we're just gonna drag it down or pull that color down going back and forth. Okay, I'm gonna get more. Again, starting at the top. Can add a bit more water to really drag it down. And the trick with this is that you don't want to bring a very saturated blue into the middle and a very saturated yellow. You almost kind of want it to fade out into this white or this really, really light blue and really, really light yellow. So they're never actually like fully mixing with full saturation. You're never getting a really dark blue and dark yellow mixing because that, that just won't work. It's going to turn green. So we're pulling it down back and forth. I can feel it getting a little dry lightening it up okay I keep dipping my paintbrush in water and I know I can fully dip it because this doesn't carry too too much water I know it's not going to be too much of a problem so kind of judge what your paintbrush carries okay let's start with yellow now I'm gonna grab this yellow I'm gonna go from the bottom up more saturated at the bottom then dragging that color up. Okay, I keep going over just to grab a bit more color. And you want it really, really soft coming towards the middle. Because if you actually look at a photo of a blue sky going into yellow, it's always really, really light in the center. Unless it's a crazy storm and it like sky turns green, then you just know don't even be looking at the sky. Get the heck out of there. It's not a, <laughs> that's not a good sign. Okay, so we've come close to the middle, but because there's not a lot of blue, there's not a lot of yellow in the middle. It's not turning green. Got it. If you feel like you want to drag that blue down a bit more, you definitely can. Let's do it. I feel like it could be a bit more. I'm gonna bring it down like this. Just gonna bring it down like this and then go side to side, side to side, side to side. Okay. There we go. It's kind of going on top of each other. Don't want to make it green. I'm gonna stop there. Now I'm gonna grab some darker blue and just darken up the top here. Maybe we can do some purple clouds up here too. Okay. Let's grab some dioxazine purple this time. And maybe some blue. And I'm just gonna start, I feel like that's too much. I'm gonna get a bit of green and make it a little bit more grayish, purpley clouds, just dark. And I'm just gonna start tapping doing the same kind of thing as this one. We're doing like a pretty simple cloudy sky that I feel like I kind of <laughs> know how to do. 
I haven't figured out the big white fluffy clouds yet. I find those so difficult. I'm trying to figure out like negative space, but blending. That's something I definitely need to work on. So I'm adding a bit of green to this purple to make it like a grayish purpley sky. Now it's bleeding out a bit more. You get those spider vein kind of looks. Like I don't know if you can see that. Okay, see this? So I'm gonna fix that a little bit. I'm just gonna lay down this color a bit. A bit more. I'm gonna take some of that pigment off. I don't want it too dark there. It's nice and light. Now remember, purple and yellow make brown. Maybe not necessarily this shade of purple too much, but we're tapping. We're not blending necessarily. Okay, and I'm gonna fix the shapes of some of these. Okay, have some up here too. Okay, so yeah, look at how those are bleeding out a bit. Not ideal. Gonna fix it just a second because it's still fairly wet, so I know I don't have to go too too fast to fix it. But I will fix it. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna wash off my brush completely, dry it completely, and I'm gonna shape these clouds down here a bit. Very gentle. Just moving along the bottom to kind of fix those shapes a bit. Just dragging it a little so it's, you don't get those like weird spider vein marks because I feel like that's not doesn't make it look too fluffy okay you can go on top too if you want I'm gonna dry my brush again okay and just remember this takes practice okay I've done a bunch of these and I've failed at a bunch of these and it's been very very frustrating might want to add a little bit more darkness if it starts to fade a bit okay a little bit of blue darker at the top Okay, darker at the top. So I'm gonna leave these pretty light. Maybe take a little bit of pigment off and just add just a bit. Okay, just a little. Okay, I'm gonna wash off my brush. Then I might even, is this wet? Might add a little bit of yellowy orange or pink. I don't know if this is gonna ruin it. I think it's kind of dry or drying. You can do a couple of pinkish. Yeah, it's kind of dry down here. Might not work. Might add a little bit of pink to some of these clouds. Or orange. Just tapping, like the sun's kind of hitting the ones down there. It's not the greatest, but it, it's okay. Okay, again, washing off, drying my brush. Just gonna kind of move these a bit. Dry it. Yeah, this isn't the best paper for skies. It's doing okay, but has a bit of a funny bit of a funny texture to it once it's done. Okay, and there we go. Man, it got dark in my room really fast. Okay, so <laughs> I need to get better lighting, I guess. I'm gonna take off this. Hopefully it didn't bleed through too much. Okay, we're good. Didn't bleed through. And there we go. There are two different gradient skies with some clouds. And just remember this takes takes practice okay it takes lots and lots of practice and you can definitely get there um, 
just keep going and then over this you could always do like black silhouettes of some fun trees maybe palm trees or some you know some evergreen trees whatever you'd like to put in the foreground you can definitely do but there you go i hope that was helpful thank you all so much for watching my video i really hope you liked it and i hope you learned something don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on instagram for even more have a great day guys bye